Hello and welcome to the Drawing Room Experts. And um, I have with me, uh, as always, for controversial topics, that's my first go-to call. And uh, for anything that is going to wreck uh, the algorithm, you know, I'm always looking for, I'm, I'm always looking for his presence. And uh, and here he is, Sarosh Jafri. Sarosh, what Welcome, uh, Zebai. Thank you again for having me. And I think I mean, uh, this time I might have pushed the boundary a little bit because uh, as you follow me on Instagram, on not my poetry account, but my uh, personal account, I yeah. actually have gotten a warning from Instagram. I saw that. Yeah, and that. it's telling me they're demonetizing me and I was sitting there like, I'm getting monetized? I didn't even know I was getting monetized. But, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, go ahead, yeah. ban me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But... Um... But yeah, as you can probably gauge from Sarosh's attire and the, you know, a nice the little flag in the background. painting. Uh, yeah. And I'm assuming that's poetry that you've written under the flag in the actually, background. Actually, yeah, that poem is actually the latest poem on my, um, no, oh, not really? my latest poem, the second the latest poem, like the one previous to the one I've just posted. Uh, really? About, I didn't know yeah. you were used to, I don't know you would write, I thought you always wrote like on a piece of paper. I didn't know you wrote like on a on a whiteboard so at times uh, it it's something new i'm trying um okay so whiteboarding nice. yeah so i thought aesthetically this would work uh hmm. so what i started out with was i had written this out and i was gonna initially you know write it out and then i was looking for like the palestinian flag but then i decided to just make the palestinian flag as you can yeah. see and then i decided to write out the poem and uh actually this poem uh, the line it starts off with is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is God's sacred promise and the scriptures guaranteed. So this is actually in response to one Elon Musk and his uh, bigoted and unfounded uh, attack on the Palestinian cause and over 1.8 billion Muslims when he said uh, fallaciously that the, the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is, quote, anti-Semitic. Yeah. So this was in response to that. Yeah, I mean, and and I think the whole context behind that is also that he's trying to save his own ass because of he course, said something. Of course. Because, you know, again, I mean, there's, a, there's a, a lot of things going on with this this particular, you know, the events of the last month or so, or two months. Two months, uh, yeah, two months now, yeah. Two months now, it, well, so... Uh, yeah, exactly right. two months now two months today. and one day yeah yeah two months one day yeah, yeah, two. yeah. exactly so um it has been relentless it has mm -hmm. been as you always say and i don't and i know i'm saying this very lightly but it's relentless and then it's also you know uh, uh groundbreaking every time mm -hmm. these things happen i'm sure we would have said the same things if this was 2014 i'm mm -hmm. sure we would have said the same things if this was 2000 seven or eight when the lebanon you know stuff yeah. happened yeah, uh, i don't remember yeah. six actually six yeah. yeah six so uh i mean it's uh the 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 irony uh you know it fails to dawn on me every time this happens is that every time this happens we say oh this is you know uh first of its kind this is groundbreaking this is um uh, you know uh bar barbaric and this is you know as if this is happening for the first time. I mean, we, we hear all of these adjectives every time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, sadly, you know, if this were to happen again in the next few years or whatever, we're going to be sitting here having the same type of conversation saying Indeed. that, you know, oh, this has happened and this has been, uh, you know, unbelievable. But anyway, yeah. given all of that, I do. So I wanted to say that because I don't want people to think that it, okay, even for us, and mm -hmm. and you know uh, and again, I hate saying this us and them kind of thing, but it is in fact true. But even for someone on the the other side of this mm -hmm. war, or or I would say uh, less Those popular, but I yeah. also don't want to say less pop. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's also not less popular. I think, I feel like but, this other side mm -hmm. is probably the most popular it has ever been in in its. Uh, in its life, I would say. Mm. Uh, I mean, compared to the last time when this happened, uh, the other side, which is the Palestinian side, you know, perhaps wasn't as loud as it is right now. Uh, 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 is it perfect? By no means. You know, mm -hmm. we all know that, you know, people playing on the side are also playing 
to a gallery that they want to attract and this mm-hmm. is election year uh, we we cannot you know uh, uh, discount any of that but mm-hmm. having said that the the important thing is that you know p- people on the palestinian side and on the other side the israeli side uh, uh, they all, they all of them fall into this mistake and this is what i want to start with first mm-hmm. anytime this something like this happens they fall into this i would say stupid and very short sided mistake of thinking that it is just happening now like mm-hmm. this is the first thing this is the year zero of yeah, the world the vacuum they it's it's a vacuum situation it's a vacuum for them it's like you know oh you know you're watching so many other shows and this and this new show comes up and you're like oh, wow this is uh you know and but you know less do they know that this is not the a new show this is just a new season of the this old it's, show it's, that has been it's playing funny you mentioned years. this because i was actually uh watching like youtube shorts and there was an indian comedian who actually talked about this exact thing where in his show he's like okay who, how many people are going for uh, supporting palestine and a bunch of people were clapping and then mm-hmm. he asked how many people are supporting israel and there was one guy and then he's all like and he's like okay bro why are you supporting israel and he's like you know i think israel is right and then he said that like Oh, so you just started watching from this season. So, you know, that it, it's it's funny that you you mentioned that, but it's actually true, right? That um uh, and especially because the thing is, um we as Muslims, especially as Muslims, and I think because we belong to a country where it's uh, the whole thing as Pakistanis, right? Where let's not right. mince words here. We are Pakistanis and if we pick up pick up the Pakistani passport, I have a Pakistani passport, you have a pa- Pakistani passport. Mm-hmm. Clear as day on every single page after your information it says this passport is valid in every country except the state of Israel, right? Both in right. English and in Urdu. Yeah. And so for us it's like, you know, this is not day zero. And of course, even for most people, because it's not happening every day, but it's almost like a constant reminder in the back background, mm. just like, because for us, Palestine is as important, especially coming from, uh, you know, being Pakistani Indian Muslims as Kashmir. This is like our, uh, Palestine is Kashmir on a greater scale or on, on the right. Western front, it's, uh, it's Palestine on the Eastern front is Kashmir where, uh, mm. but for a lot of people, especially in the West, right? Especially those who are not Palestinian, who are not Muslim, who do not have, you know, um, the context, connect, context and some connection, of us we have, yeah. yeah, connection yeah. and context to the uh, the struggle and to this uh, crisis that has been uh, in play at least since 1948. But I mean, we can go back yeah. to you know the last 200 years since the British meddling, right? in yeah, yeah. the uh the middle east um that uh, and the zionist movement at large um mm-hmm. that this is it's happening right like and this is why it's like um a lot of these folks you know you have like oh poor israelis you know they were just going to a concert and they got attacked by hamas okay but why did hamas attack them right, right. i like, mean the context uh, 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 that's exactly what i'm suggesting right that people mm-hmm kind of like they start when they are uh introduced to this topic they start exactly. then they like out of I mind mean, out of even sight more yeah out of mind out of sight i mean even now i feel like a lot of people have just zone like just you know zone they're out beginning to just... teeter off yeah yeah teeter, off, teeter yeah. off to other things i mean we have like the new year starting 2024 i mean mm-hmm. the election over here in this mm-hmm. the, in this country is going to be top of mind and top of the paper every every single day until mm-hmm. November happens and then January happens, you know, so God knows what's going to happen between now and then. Yeah. But you're, you're starting to see that people are starting to get bored and, you know, looking at other avenues or other news uh, are, you know, uh, perhaps catching more attention. They are, but uh, I do want to stand and make a point here that one thing that is unprecedented, I would say about this particular form of protest, right. And this particular time it's uh, from what I've seen, there has been a constant, you know, barrage of pro-Palestinian rallies. Like the the organizers, especially in the West, right? They they are recognizing that you know this is an issue. We can't let it go. Like think about it this way, right? Drawing room experts, as we are, we're just a bunch of guys, right? We talk about topics at hand, the controversial mm-hmm. topics at hand, and here we are two months out we didn't talk about ukraine yeah. two months out 
No, exactly. We, I mean, we, Ukraine. We, poor... we didn't. Uh, I mean, we didn't talk about the cricket World Cup too. Oh, you're not. I mean, I saw your po- podcast about the cricket World Cup. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be making a cricket podcast about in uh, in March of uh, 2024. Yeah, not even but, like. Yeah. But the next month, I'm not going to yeah, be talking about it. Exactly. So. But yet here we are talking about it. It, it is fresh on people's mind. It does feel different. That's what I was saying. That mm-hmm. although, yes, I want to caveat by saying that you know it always feels different. It always feels unprecedented. It always mm-hmm. feels massive. But mm-hmm. this time, it does genuinely feel. I mean, we only can, uh, you know, compare to what we've seen in the past. Mm-hmm. We don't have the luxury of looking in the future and see what it will be like when it happens again or something else happens. You know, what what's gonna be uh, what what's it gonna be like in the future? However, I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the first thing, like you rightfully said, I mean, the the, the easiest thing that people um, gravitate towards is just feeling aggrieved mm-hmm. and feeling um, um, offended um, without understanding the context. And it's very mm-hmm. easy to do that. You know, it's if you start the history at October 7th, mm-hmm. it's very easy for you to have an opinion and it's mm-hmm. it's pretty black and white after that mm-hmm. you know even there are nuances to that but still you know if you were to start the clocks at october 7th you know you are you understand a lot of these opinions that are outside mm-hmm. um the frustrations that i i mean especially especially after this i mean and this is something that only us shias perhaps might relate to mm-hmm. and, and maybe maybe it's just me i don't know about you but uh I've always thought about, you know, the coming of the Imam from this perspective, this, this mm-hmm. one hadith that gets repeated multiple times on the pulpits mm-hmm. is that when he will come, he will fill the earth with justice as if, uh, uh, you know, as it was filled with injustice mm-hmm. before him, something mm-hmm. along those lines, right? Yeah. So I always used to wonder, okay, is this enough? Like, is this injustice enough for this that that you know the 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 straw that breaks the camel's back is this enough or are we is this going to be more are we going to be more right so mm-hmm. all this years up until this point mm-hmm. I always thought there's injustice but maybe not the you know bring the imam injustice you know what I mean I, no, I, I don't exactly. know how to say this I mean no, there's I, obviously I, I, there's no yeah. there's no layers to say so yeah what... jo jo injustice I don't want to demean demean that injustice but I also don't want to say so, okay, you know, there's been yeah. injustice, like that level of injustice that the Rasulullah said. It's it's not that right so, now. So what up I until would, October seventh, that, that yeah. I start to understand. Yeah. So one, uh, so two things I want to say here, right? One is again uh, this whole concept, like like you said, right? Like that level of injustice, right? We have yeah. uh, the current situation we're seeing. It's the word uh, in uh, Arabic is there's a word called nifaq where we get the Arabic slash Urdu and Farsi word manafiq, hypocrisy. Yep. We have yep. not seen blatant hypocrisy at this level. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we're not seeing hypocrisy just from the usual actors, but we're seeing hypocrisy from people like, and I will call him out, uh, Hamza Yusuf. Right? Like people like, who try to both side it? I don't yeah, both side. Yeah, like right before this. Oh yeah, you know we can divvy up uh, uh, Bayt al Maqaddas, and you know the Jews can have their section, the Christians can have their section, the Muslim. No, that's not how this works. Okay, this is not uh, Oprah Winfrey giving out a uh, free, you know, Bayt al Maqaddas day, right? Yeah. And you have the whereas in the past you have seen Egypt, you have seen Saudi Arabia, you have seen. The United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, Syria, well, not Syria as much, but I would say like Libya, Pakistan, mm-hmm. Turkey, all these major Muslim countries, you know, stand up and at least outwardly denounce Israel, right? They had at the biggest, you know, the telling sign of this, of, you know, the, in Urdu, we say, we say, we say, we say, the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Countries, the Muslim right. UN, you could say, they had a resolution. And the Emirates, Saudi, Egypt, 
Jordan, all these countries. What did they do? They voted against the condemnation of Israel. That has never happened. And, you know, my latest poem, I actually kind of addressed that. I'm like, where are the, where, oh, where are the noble Arabs? Yeah. Where, I mean, the Palestinians are your brethren. I'm a Pakistan. Right, but again, uh, with, with, with that, and I understand your, your sentiments and I agree with them as well. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I say to that is, why are we even naive enough to imagine that there's going no, to be a time where they do that? No, no, or do we're something not, that we didn't expect. No, no, we don't expect this, right? But where the thing what I'm getting at is the level of injustice and hypocrisy, right? That whereas right. they would give us false platitudes and give us false, you know, this lip service, they're not even right. bothering to do that. Right, right, right. That I agree. That I agree. Yeah, and that that's you're what seeing I'm saying, like, the the pendulum. Yes. shift from that perspective that it's not even like they're too lazy to even yeah. say you know what yeah they, I don't, I'm they, not, they're not, I'm not they're not even trying to fake it but in the alhamdulillah yeah. the on the other side you go to the public of these countries right there's protest on protest they're demanding for a ceasefire they're demanding for their uh spineless leaders to get up and respond you know when when you hear that hadith that i was quoting earlier you mm -hmm. almost imagine that the world is on fire yeah. everything's on fire and hence like, you know, like the terminator right? you're looking at the term the world the term, the yeah, yeah that's 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 what that's what people imagine mm -hmm. or i used to imagine mm -hmm. but having now some sort of like uh i guess some sort of pers perspective into these things what i've come to the conclusion now that i feel like what is that barometer and i and i want your opinion on this that i mm -hmm. do, do you think that that's that i'm thinking correctly here mm -hmm. I think the barometer is the frustration that each person yes. experiences. Indeed. And there are times, honestly, when I listen to something and it frustrates me to a point where it impacts my day. It mm -hmm. impacts my conversations that I have with people that I love. Mm -hmm. It impacts, like it messes with my head mm -hmm. because it just is unbelievable mm -hmm. that uh, and this is the worst of worst examples. I mean, the, I mean, we we should know better to not take Ted Cruz yeah. seriously. Mm -hmm. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quote this because mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, uh, or uh, I don't know when. I mean, this is happening so fast. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, he does an interview, or actually, a few it was last week. He does an interview with Ryan Grimm mm -hmm. from the Intercept. I don't know if you follow him, but you know, I mm -hmm. admire his work as a journalist. But he does that interview and. Uh, the the interview Ryan Grimm kind of pushes him to say that you know there's a lot of children dying on the other side and there's atrocities happening. Do you condemn the dying of children? Mm -hmm. And to to that it, they you know a staple American politician answered that you know Israel has a right to defend itself. Blah 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 blah. You know, very very staple. It's like okay fine. But then to top it off, what he says what they as in the IDF takes much more precautions that even the best like he even like was even prepared to say that they're even better than us mm -hmm. so uh to quote like this famous meme that happened like in pakistan a few years ago mm -hmm. ke, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what it is yeah the yes. guy I, I, is that, I, I, yeah i remember the meme so, so you know the reference right yeah so so so, so yeah exactly <laughs> exactly exactly you know you can't escape him that guy is you know is, he's a living legend or yeah. you know in in spirit i guess I to wo us level of commitment and admiration jo un, you hear from these politicians for the idf and the idea and all of that stuff mm -hmm that really screws with my head and that's a frustration that's when i feel like okay yeah imam this is too much for me yeah. i can't i it's... just can't because you your failure to engage mm -hmm. is actually the tipping point i feel like your failure to say you know what i can't wait where, where do i even start to have a conversation it's... with someone like this indeed so my i have a word for this and i've been thinking about this for a while throughout this whole thing right my feeling to describe my feeling I don't know if it's in Farsi and Arabic, but Urdu make loves it. Bebasi. It's yeah. not not only me, it's not hopelessness. It We're not hopeless. No. But we are bebasi. Bebasi. Like you have everything, but you can't do like, anything. You're just yeah. like 
जो कहते हैं वी आर एरर 404 404 एरर एरर 404 you're talking to people right and i'm sure you've had this at work uh, these folks who you know are pro zionism and pro all they're good people on every other level and the, they're just ill informed very ill informed but the thing is they are not there's a cognitive dissonance yeah they are not willing to have a rational they cannot rationally compartmentalize difficult it's not even rational it's it rationality comes later yeah. i think it's the first thing it's very difficult yes i understand the difficulty and and again not everything in life is easy you mm-hmm. know not everything in life is abc not everything in life is you know baby shark but the thing so, is it, like these murder, conversations are nuanced yeah, and these blatant, conversations are difficult exactly a blatant murder of 8000 children should not be a difficult and complicated issue and this the is where bombing, we are. That's the hence the ba- 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 bombing hence the ba- of ba- the Al Shifa hospital should not be a complex issue. The yeah, yeah. the largest open air concentration camp should not be an uh, a complicated issue. Like here's the thing: the IDF's uh, response to everything is it's a Hamas base. Habibi, where is not a Hamas base? Okay, fine. Gaza is a Hamas base. What about uh, West Bank? Is that also West a Hamas Bank, base? Yeah. There's a Hamas there. Right. And right, but again, these these are the things, right? That you feel like on the face of it, these are very potent pushback questions that one should not have a, an answer to, or if there is an answer, I'm missing it. You know. By the way, I uh, do want but, to say but, one thing before I move on what? to uh, to answer the the classic Pierce Morgan question. I I want to address that question. The that question. What are they supposed to do? No, 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 no. The Pierce Morgan question that he's asked Basim Yusuf, he's asked everybody. Uh, Muhammad Hijab. No, I will not. Uh, I will condemn Hamas the moment uh, IDF stops being a thing. When you give me a reason to condemn Hamas, I will condemn Hamas. Yeah. Besides Hamas, what do they have? Yeah, and I'll, 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 I want to talk about Hamas, and I have something you know about that that's been bothering me. But I want to mm-hmm. go back to the Pierce Morgan thing. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to this uh, this YouTube channel that I listen to every now and then. I think in one of those um, videos I was watching, um, he was commenting on someone saying that, "Okay, what is what do you suggest IDF does after this October seventh happens? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what are they supposed to do uh, if if not go crazy, angry, and you know start bombing children? Well, what else do you expect them to do? You know what I mean? So those kind of things. And and I loved the answer that that was put forward by you know, um, you know in this video because mm-hmm. and that's the answer that's the answer that you know makes more that's the answer that makes more sense so when something like that happens you know imagine a state you know you know regardless of what state it is if something like that uh, an activity takes place mm-hmm. your citizens get killed the answer to that i mean we're talking about us here as well i mean we're talking about mm-hmm. 2001 and mm-hmm. talking about iraq and afghanistan all of that mm-hmm. the answer isn't to go batshit crazy and start bombing other countries mm-hmm. and and putting out putting forward this collective punishment mm-hmm. by the way collective punishment that's the that's another thing that mm-hmm. i'm you know i'm now seeing and then also translating that into what's going on with pakistan mm-hmm. and the migrant crisis i don't mm-hmm. know if you oh yeah yeah that's following awesome. the afghan migrant mm-hmm. that is also collective punishment by the way that yeah, pisses indeed, me off indeed. you know as much as uh, anything else but that's for another day i mm-hmm. guess yeah. but um uh, the the collective punishment is the 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 you know that's not the answer the answer is that if you think that the opposition is uh the last hope of that particular country like mm-hmm. for example hamas in this instance mm-hmm. and then you, the people kind of attach their allegiances to them or you the, what you would want to do is remove that you remove and make them you isolate them and that requires intelligence that requires targeted intelligence and that requires time. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen in a couple of months. It's not going to happen in a few weeks or even a couple of years. But the thing is, again, going back to what I was saying that you know people are not prepared to have difficult conversations. Mm-hmm. States are not prepared to do difficult things mm-hmm. because they want flash. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then it's not just flash. It's not just laziness. Sometimes it's just recklessness too because they're genuinely genocidal in their thoughts and mm-hmm. their the way of thinking. But the thing is that, you know, 
there are many other ways that this could have been handled, which were not bombing babies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when people say, what are they supposed to do? Yes, there are ways to handle this, but it's just what, what you don't want to hear. You want to hear like, oh, you know, if someone punches you. Quote, punches quoting uh, Jordan Peterson, how... enough is enough. Give them hell. Right. Yeah, exactly. Ugh, fucking Jordan Peterson. I mean, that. I mean that and then Andrew T- those kind of people Andrew Tate's been having actually a field day with this though. <laughs> it's... I know, I know. But again, Andrew Tate I, I, that's not the hill I want to okay. die exactly, on. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to I don't want to like associate myself with Andrew Tate. I mean, given whatever he says, I don't care what he says. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he supports my my point of view. Mm-hmm. The guy is the guy is shady, man. Oh, yes, I don't yes. I mean, are we are we are we that low on, you know, Muslim uh uh, representatives in the media that that's the guy I want to rely on now. I mean, is that that's that's where we come down to? I mean, we have sort of Jaffrey sitting here. I mean, I'm sure you can do a much better dog who has not done what he's done. And th- um, it's the problem uh, of you know, in quoting my ustad, uh, say Nizamuddin Ahmed uh, from Dallas, um, we, this is um, the Kali Yug of the Kali Yug, Akhir Zaman of Akhir Zaman. This is in quoting the title of Rene Ganon's uh, magnum opus, this is the reign of quantity and the signs of the time. It's about, this is modernity, right? Where you have, and I think even uh, there's a, a saying of Amir al there will be a time where, you know, the leaders will be fools. And what, what would you call Andrew right. Tate? He is a leader of these people. It doesn't need to be a physical, like a president or a king or a, uh, Prince. Yeah, the, yeah, he is a leader. Yeah. It, he's an influencer. What is an influencer? They, they're they're leaders. Jordan Peterson. They're leaders. Yeah, they're leaders. They are, and you are going to be raised with your leader on the day of judgment. So, to me, I, yeah. I want, it's not the governments. Yeah. It's not governments. Yeah. It's not governments you're going to be raised with. You're going to be raised, raised with people with that you follow. Who, yeah, who do you follow? Who do you subscribe to? And Correct. it's Correct. it's unfortunate that you know these people have. Is I don't think this is a a you know a, a battle. For lai lai la la this. this is not a, this is it, not a but, battle so against it, quote unquote so Islam. The, I think it is the it is it is a because because the thing is that um, it, it I is, don't it think is. this so, is. I'll, I'll a, tell you, and if I may, if I may. Uh, so the ulama, some of the ulama that I am in contact with, and scholars. They have uh, they, right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just yeah, one one yeah, quick yeah, quick thing yeah, I want to add please, before please. you answer, and you can take your time. Is 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 that if this was the Christians mm-hmm. in in the land of Watsa mm-hmm. and and around that West Bank, mm-hmm. all of that, the 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 Zionist government would do still exactly. the same because they need the land. Yeah. They don't care who's occupying. They're not looking at this. Oh, we need the land because it's occupied mm-hmm. by a Muslim. No, they just need the land. Period. Exactly. So I feel like this is a uh, uh for those reasons. I feel like this is a a geopolitical war which has obviously you know shades of religion and you know because that's a very uh you know uh, a, a screaming theme that comes out of it and that's it's not completely outside of the like it's not completely discounted for that matter but i also don't feel like because it's this most screaming theme henceforth that is the most that is the biggest reason for the war so i feel like the conflict i i i, I... is is much more simpler than just saying that this is oh this is a battle between two religions so, it's, so let me clarify my position okay so this is not a battle between muslims and jews okay this is not a battle between islam and judaism or islam and christianity okay it's this is the path of righteousness haq and batil this is what it is this is haq and batil Right, just as an yes, injustice. and that yeah. is the crux of all religion. Yeah. You want to go, and this is actually an uh, argument that's being brought up. Okay, you say you have right to Israel. Why? Why do you have the right to the Holy Land? Because you are a Jew. Because you're an Israelite. Okay. Fine. Because four thousand years ago, this was promised. By whom? To you. By whom? Who, prom- who promised it to you? Mm-hmm. Bro, like it's like me coming. I'm a Pakistani Sayyid of Sayyid descent, meaning I'm of Arab descent, of Hijazi descent, and me right. coming and saying, "Well, give me a portion of Medina because I'm a Sayyid." It's like no, like if I go to uh, to MBS and say, "Hey, I'm a Sayyid," and I, I, you know, I'm a Hashimi. Give me 
you know the uh, uh, the garden of do the gene, uh, do the DNA yeah. gene test and you know there's find no out birth, I am. birthright hijabs for me is there? That's yeah. ridiculous. That you don't like make that argument and mind you, my ancestors only left a thousand years ago from the Middle East, but I don't get to come back and say, oh, right. that's my land. And no, the argument that well, right. they, no, they shouldn't. It's a mute point. If you leave someplace and the people who stayed are there. It's not like the, the Palestinians just waltzed onto an empty land. No, they were there. You left, they were there. Right. For instance, and I'll give you a better example, an easier example. 1947, there was a partition of India and Pakistan, correct? Our mm-hmm. ancestors, I, I, I know you're Mahajir, I'm Mahajir. We left from the state right. of UP. Our ancestors left, our fathers, forefathers, grandfathers. Right. And in those lands, in those homes, the local, whoever they were, Hindu, Sikh, Christians, whoever they were, Muslims, Muslim, yeah. whoever remained, yeah. they took over that property. Do I yeah. now in 2023 have the right to go back? For instance, my family is from Agra. And claim and say, those no, give properties. No, no so, of course not. So same Maybe. thing. Like If I don't have a claim to a 76, 78-year-old uh, piece of land, why do you have the right to 2,000-year-old 4, land? I'm sorry. That's that's ridiculous. Right. That argument, I agree. I mean, 100% agree. I think that that thing. I think one thing I w- wanted to cover in this mm-hmm. podcast, and um, w- which I, I feel like will will be slightly controversial, mm-hmm. is a couple of things. One is um, obviously the the IDF and the State of Israel's role in this uh, long-standing mm-hmm. conflict and this issue is no surprise and there's no like obviously if you're giving if you're saying that's the other party that's the enemy they're they're doing Mm -hmm. what they're doing right so uh, blaming them is very redundant because it's that's their Mm -hmm. job right it's basically saying oh the other team beat me well that's what they're there for they're 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 there to win Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that's one side of it and that's well documented nobody disagrees with it um um and 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 standing up to it is what we've Mm -hmm. discussed like standing up to it speaking against it uh, 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 organizing against it, you know, through, uh, you know, your BDS movement, you know, your protests mm-hmm. happening. By the way, London did this unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Austin uh, uh, procession a, a month ago or something. Austin yeah. just did it. I know there's been a lot of stuff happening in in the U.S. as well. So that's us. That's the the response mm-hmm. to the the first mm-hmm. side, kind of like because we feel like the answer to that, the reason why that is happening, is because you think. That they are not true. They are the, the way, aggressors, one, one the transgressors. Here, one thing here. Do you know uh, the organization that's leading all these protests? What it's called? It's not the Palestinians no. and the Muslims. It's this organization called the Jewish called? Voice for Peace. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. do want to wish yes. Uh, yes, they are. those uh, of our Jewish brothers and sisters who are standing w- up with the Palestinian cause against the Zionist aggression a happy Hanukkah. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's it true. Is, uh, Hanukkah is. Uh, it, it started as of uh, as of last or, night. It started it last week? night, so it was today was the first day. Oh and yeah, the, last night. And yeah, the yeah, story yeah. of Hanukkah that's is true, about true. a resistance against an injustice of an occupying <laughs> force. I mean, it's the what irony. A, what a what a beautiful yeah, coincidence irony, we're talking right? about this. Yeah. Of that, yeah. But but going back to that point, that is the easiest. That is an easy yes. conversation to have. 99.99% of Muslims are e- very comfortable having that mm-hmm. conversation. The one that I yeah. just described. That okay, how bad is Israel? How bad? Or what? What should we do? We should be boycotting, you know, McDonald's and, and Starbucks. The sad part is for All a lot of people, very easy it's conversation. Easy, but for a lot of people, it's still very difficult. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're still they're still like some outliers, and I give you that. You know, people still having st- Starbucks. I mean, I just mm-hmm. avoid it by design. Yeah. I mean. Uh, every year, me and my wife have this thing that we go and get mm-hmm. those cups. But this yeah. year, we didn't. We didn't, and 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 it just like it didn't even occur to us that we're doing mm-hmm. a boycott. We just didn't have it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then just last week or just a couple of days ago, I find out that they're losing yeah. billions of dollars. But that's yeah. a great thing. But that's those are the con- those are the easier conversations. Again, the theme of this this particular episode, if if anyone's mm-hmm. noticing, is differentiating between the easy and the difficult. Yes. The difficult part is the the controversial part, and I feel like um, a huge part of the problem of this this whole engagement that's been happening for seventy years, and especially this particular couple mm-hmm. of months ago, 
I gotta say it's Hamas. Coming up in the next episode. So I'm happen. willing to have that difficult conversation because with you right now. Surely you're not telling me that those 8,000 kids that have, they're dead now, they would have regardless been dead had, had October 7th happened or not happened. Are you saying? Are you saying that October seventh? No, 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 I'm not happen? saying that. If I'm not saying, saying that. that then, come so, on. Let me just ask you: What is your news source? 